Hello, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Jack Anderson, and Matt, to answer your question, does my back hurt? Yes, I'm carrying all these boxes all around. Yes, it's starting to hurt by now. Um, and I'm here to present to you my company, Life Changing Foods LLC, and more specifically, our product, Doc E's Life Changing Salsa. Uh, now to answer the question that you're probably asking, it's a question I get when I do demos in the grocery store right away. Life-changing salsa, what is that? What, what's life-changing about this? And the simple fact is we donate a portion of our proceeds to build fresh water wells in Ethiopia. And that's something that was right from the start. This business began about 14 months ago. And when, when I started it, I had no idea what to expect. Absolutely none. Uh, the goal was twofold. I wanted to learn about entrepreneurship. I wanted to see if I could learn something. And I wanted to make a positive social impact on the world. Um, a team of students and myself got together, and over those 14 months, we developed a product, three different flavors, as you see in front of you. We built a brand. Believe it or not, we were able to convince some people to give us money to get this thing launched. <laughs> we started working with reputable retailers, as you see on the screen here, High V, Lunds and Byerly's, Amazon, and most recently, starting next week, Kowalski's Markets in the Twin Cities. And from there, our media coverage grew. Uh, we've been covered on local media here in Mankato and St. Peter, uh, most notably in the Twin Cities with WCCO Radio and TV. Um, and tomorrow at 12.30, I believe, if you're bored and you want to watch Pioneer Public Television, they're doing a 30-minute special on it. So, Channel 10 on DirecTV for those that haven't. <laughs> and finally, in those 14 months, we were able to bring in about $30,000 in revenue. And most importantly, and the thing that I am absolutely the most proud of, is we built a freshwater well in the tiny village of Dakar, Ethiopia, and 400 people have access to fresh water now for the first time. And it was, it's an absolutely amazing experience. That well was completed in March, and it's really energized the business going forward into the new year. Now, I know this is an entrepreneurship competition. What I've heard is we're being judged on four distinct categories. Well, number one being progress, two is feasibility, three is scalability, and four is innovation. I believe I covered the first two in the opening. So I won't spend much more time with that. But I want to jump to what I think most of you are asking is the innovation piece. Um, I am, I'm not going to lie, I did not invent the salsa. This just <laughs> happens to be something that I've been working on. Um, it's a billion dollar market across the country. According to different reports, it's the second most popular condiment behind ketchup. And some of you are probably wondering, well, Jack, how many salsa brands are there? I have no idea. There's too many to count. I, I went down to the local grocery store last night, though, and I did a little uh, snooping around. 21 different brands of salsa on the shelf, including our own. That is about the least innovative, most unimaginative product that's probably up here today, right? However, bear with me a little bit. The innovation does not come from the product. It does not even necessarily come from the story. There are other groups and businesses that do something like this, building well, doing a social mission. What comes is when you put it all together and you start thinking about how should this product be distributed? Come back with me for a minute. We're in the grocery store. There's 21 brands of salsa. Most of those brands, almost all of them, are in grocery stores across the country and they're competing for the same target market as we are. You, myself, mom, dad, your parents, pushing their carts down the aisle, looking at all the salsas and picking on price, on taste, you name it. And I thought to myself, there's got to be more of a market out there than just that in a way that I don't have to compete with 20 other brands on the shelves. And so I got back and I looked at the mission of our business, which is to empower people to change lives through the purchasing of our products. And I thought to myself, is there a way that we can reach customers outside of just our, our local partners in Minnesota? Is there a way that we can work with businesses to connect them, businesses that are looking more and more to align with social mission-driven companies like ours? And most importantly, is there a way to empower entire communities to get behind a life-changing mission, whether they want to help their local charity or they want to send people to different mission trips and help out in places like Ethiopia. And what we came up with was four sales channels. Three, two of which are fairly original in my opinion and two that have been tried and true. Retail, which I've already talked about, has been our bread and butter for the first year, working at Flunds and Byerly's and Kowalski's and things of that nature. The second one, to reach those customers beyond the state, we started working with Amazon. I didn't know how that was going to go, but since we started in November, sales have increased every single month, and we're selling more and more sauce. I'm actually getting tired of packaging stuff and sending it out, to be honest with you. But I like it. People from Kentucky, Oregon, California, everywhere are buying it. We're getting good reviews, and it's fun to see that it's uh, not too hot, <laughs> even though it's the Minnesota Spice. <laughs> the, uh, the third channel is then corporate gift baskets. How can we engage with those businesses that are trying to align their brand with a brand that they want to be a part of? Uh, we actually we saw in the slides earlier our gift basket 
uh, we started selling them around Christmas, kind of by accident, and we ended up selling 500 of them. Some of those people that bought it were businesses, bought 100 at a time, some bought 20 at a time. Um, but either way, that was a significant portion of our revenue in our first year. It was one of the leading reasons we were able to build a well in March. So we think that's going to grow. We think that's very, very scalable as businesses continue to look in this. We're working with partners that are going to be marketing this in their catalogs. They're going to be working with businesses directly. And finally, what I am most proud of and most excited about, which has not been tested yet, but I have a lot of confidence in, is that fourth channel. Remember I mentioned, how can we empower entire communities? I don't know about you, but when I was a kid, whether it was at church or whether I was at school, it seemed like every few months I was out on the streets peddling some sort of product, whether it was candy, it was salt. I've been told by some of the older people in the audience that some of you may remember Happenings books. I don't know what that is, but it sounds terrible. <laughs> and I thought to myself, why can't we take our brand, our life-changing brand, and equip young people at churches, at schools, and say, go out and sell this stuff. Pick Pick something that you want to support. Maybe you want to feed the, the homeless. Maybe you want to go to a local food shop. Maybe you want to send kids on a mission trip. Go out, sell this. You go to the door and they ask, why should I buy this? Well, it's life-changing salsa. Why is it life-changing? Well, two reasons, actually. I'm going to be selling this salsa to go out and make one a mission trip to New Orleans or wherever it is. And the company that uh, distributes this is building wells with a percentage of the profits. And they can go online and provide them with all the marketing materials. And I don't know about you, but when a good idea gets around in my church, it starts getting spread all across as people say, you got to do this. And this is something that's totally scalable. We equip them with the materials. They go out and sell it. They have the orders. I just drop the salsa off at their front door and say, thank you very much. I hope that you made a difference and changed some lives today. And finally, I don't want to forget about the retail channel. Uh, those other 20 brands of salsa on the shelf, they didn't do these extra things like gift baskets. They didn't do fundraisers. They didn't need to. They worked at it for a long time, and they built up their network. They started regionally just like us, and they expanded across the country. There's no reason we can't do that. I've sat down with three different distributors. They're all very, very willing and eager to carry this product. I've just told them, I can't do it right now. I'm looking for more capital. I want to make sure that we're capital um, secure and sustainable before I move forward. But they want to get us in, into Kansas City in the Midwest, and they're looking to move us nationally. Um, and that's very, very exciting. But again, I'm not going to do it until I'm feeling comfortable where the business is at. And finally, to wrap this up, the name of this business is not Life Changing Salsa LLC. It's Life Changing Foods. And I don't know when it's coming, but it's coming soon. There's going to be different sauces and rubs and spices that are going to all complement all four of these revenue channels, and they're all going to work together and only going to build a more scalable and sustainable platform for us, while at the same time continuing to change lives. And as we move into our second year of business, we'll be moving on to our second job. So with that, I thank you for having me up here today. I wish I'd have brought some chips for you. Maybe we could work on that at the reception. Uh, any questions for me? Thank you. Thank you. 